What's up guys, it's Bastian here, coming at you with another Gundam War CCG deck profile. Yet again we are looking at brown, yet again we are looking at an aggro brown build, so let's jump right into it. Looking at our unit, starting with the one drops, you are not going to be surprised. If you have any knowledge of this game, we are running three copies of Mighty Fellow here. This guide is amazing, it is a unit that when you play you look at the top ten cards of your nation pile you pick one brown basic generator card from it put it in your hand shuffle your deck this means that we can run eleven generators in this deck there you go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven generators but with the two mighty fellas we have pseudo fourteen well not realistically fourteen but with the mulligan rule if you have a generator in your hand, you have a Mighty Fellow in your hand, you're kind of guaranteed to be hitting a second generator of Mighty Fellow. As long as you got one specific brown generation card in your hand and a Mighty Fellow, after the mulligan, you are going to be laughing. Because this deck runs at a very low cost. We're not looking for any big units uh, with very expensive costs. We can go up to four, but we can easily operate this deck with three generators. So three copies of Mighty Fellow support, which does also, of course, mean we can drop this on top of our one unit per turn allocation. The support is a fantastic thing. This is the only keyword in the English version cars that has the support keyword on it, by the way. So three copies of Mighty Fella to make sure that we kick off and we have some uh, good deck thinning for generators and also making sure that we get those generators. Three copies of Wad. I absolutely love this little guy. One of the things that I love to do with Wad is the fact that uh, whilst a support unit cannot block if a team consists of only support units, you might be sitting there on a mighty fellow thinking, your opponent might be thinking, well, they won't be able to block. You drop Wad, doesn't actually even cost you any specific nation cards, you just need to have one brown generator in play. You put it behind the mighty fellow, and now you got a two team attack power to block either in earth or space which is absolutely fantastic what enables mighty fellow to do nice little chum blocks for us but what i love about what is that quick there and when it comes to play it comes into play in reroll status so it's immediately useful it can lead a team it can support a team it doesn't cost you anything special can go to earth and space it's just an absolutely fantastic tiny little unit Perfect for just chum blocking out of nowhere. Perfect for, for enabling Mighty Fellow. I absolutely love Wood. Moving on to our two drops, let's look at three copies of John's Borjarnon. This is our first unit that requires us to have two generators, one brand, and it does cost us one card from the top of our nation pal as well. So what John's Borjarnon brings to the table is again availability to go either to earth or space which is fantastic the one one two is welcome but really this guy wants to be supporting he wants to use its shooting points when a character card is set on this card and this card goes to the battle area earth or space this card gets plus zero plus one plus zero until the end of the turn this is both attacking and defending so realistically this guy is going to be fantastic in playing the role of a support unit doesn't really matter who is up front, John's Borjana will be able to just go out there and bring us that additional shooting power that we need in this deck. Our next two drops, final two drops, three copies of Godwin that we got here. This is similar to John's Borjana, ultimately these cards play pretty much the same rule, but John's uh, Borjana wants to go behind supporting Godwin. Godwin becomes superb when you are able to play a character onto it. When a character card is set on this card, re-roll this card, in addition this card gets plus two, plus zero, plus zero until the end of the turn. This effect cannot be duplicated. So it's a 2-1-1. One, one. You play it. You get a character onto it. It is immediately act, uh, active so you can either attack or you keep it down to defend. You normally want to attack. This is no aggro deck. That's what we're here to do. But the fact that it can reroll itself and the fact that both Borjarn and Godwin work off having a character uh, put onto them is a fantastic little theme that this deck uh, has in itself. Moving on to three costs, I'm first going to 
talk about another one of our uh, backup units, sort of shooting point units. Armier is another brilliant card. Armier is a battleship with quick and it has supply two. What this means is, first of all, quick means we can drop an extra unit a turn with quick. Uh, there has been a ruling to stop overwhelming our opponents, so you can only drop one extra card, one extra unit, sorry, one extra unit with quick per turn, but you still get that allocation of quick during your opponent's turn as well. So technically what you could do is you could drop a Jones Borjarno, and you could drop a Mighty Fella, and you could drop a Wad in the same turn, but then that's about it. Although, I say that, you could also drop a battleship card because battleships work the same way as support. You can actually use that on top of your usual unit allocation. And yet again, when this unit card is put into play, put it in reroll status. So what comes in in reroll? Armier comes in in reroll. Godwin is likely to come in in reroll if you got that character in your hand. Ideally, you will. But it is also brilliant because it's another out of the blue chomp blocker if you need it to be with wad and also that supply to means that if we have this armor in our team and we send out two additional units this can supply two units which means they they don't tap they don't roll at the end of your turn you can keep them up to then defend with and that is a key thing that armor gives us besides that yeah, it is a little bit expensive with that two unit but what it brings to the table is absolutely worth that cost Let's look at our final units, the big units, sort of the finisher units. We have two, three copies of Turn A Gundam. This is also a bit of an expensive unit. It does cost us two cards from the top of our nation pile, but it is still worth it because whilst on surface is a 2-0-3, two, two, when this card is in a battle, it gets plus two, plus zero, plus zero until the end of the turn. So that's both on attack and defense. Turn A equipped with Beam Saber will actually be a 4-0-3 unit, which is just absolutely fantastic. You got this out on the front. You might have a Jones Borjarno with a character on it. Uh, on these guys, you will get a 4-5-6. And then if you have an armier there as well to give them supply, the team will be a seven power team, but also you can um, say, well, okay, well, these guys will all tap. Actually, you're supplying these two, and then these two will be ready for you to defend as well during your opponent's turn, which is really important. That's one of the big things that we like to have in uh, in sort of these... Uh, these games is to ensure that just not we're not just swinging in, but we also have uh, basically this. If you play Magic the Gathering, this vigilance effect, so our guys can also defend. We've got two copies of Eagle. This is Charger Mode. That's actually been eroded. The name is Eagle Charger Mode. It's another slightly more expensive unit, and we do need to have four generations out to be able to play this. But we can, as I said, perfectly function off just these units there if we get to see only three generations. So this unit is a 403, which in itself is an absolute beast. However, in your attack step, you can pay zero, and this card adds assault and gets plus two, plus zero, minus two until the end of the turn. So this is an effect that you can opt for. You don't have to activate it, of course. It's not an auto effect that happens. You can decide if you want to use this or not. And of course, Assault is Trample for the Magic the Gathering players. What this ultimately gives us is if our opponent would be defending with, let's say, a total power of 4, well, the uh, other 2, if you compare 6 to 4, then you have 2 left as change. Because of that Assault, those 2 would then be dealt to your opponent's nation power. Fantastic stuff. A little bit expensive. And sometimes it can be a bit of a glass cannon, but it predominantly I would say it's more of a finisher more than anything else. I mean, you know if you're going to be able to get in for 4-5 damage, you're not going to mind uh, losing this unit because obviously with one defense point this unit is probably not going to stay around. But you got the flexibility to decide whether you want to swing him for hard or you just want to use it as an additional two copies of Turn A Gundam with, with big games Beam Saber because that's basically what it is. And then finally, two more support units, but this can work really well at the front as well to soak up some extra damage. We got two copies of Gundam Leonard, Leopard even, Gundam Leopard. Again, yeah, you need to have four generations, but only one of them needs to be brown. That's not 
doesn't matter at all, at all for us today. And just because it's turn A or Gundam X doesn't matter. Brown is brown in this game. And uh, it is a 223 unit with voucher. Voucher is a little bit complicated. If you want a little bit more information on that, just go and check out the uh, the uh, the rule book for this game. But basically, depending on how much damage you get in, you can pick something back from your junkyard. So that can be useful, but what we really use this guy for is uh, he can soak up some damage with a 3 defense, but that 2-2 two, two is really good. It's either good for uh, strike value, but really like it for shooting. And in a defense step, any defense step, you can pay 1, damage all of your opponent's unit cards, battling against this card by 1 damage. So we can... Uh, deal out as much damage, uh, however many units your opponent has, only one to each unit, but it's a really nice spread damage effect, and it makes it even more likely for your team to be able to just completely wipe out your opponent's defensive powers, and then hopefully next turn you'll be able to sweep through and, uh, and deal some massive damage. And it only costs us one card from our nation pal. So this is our unit lineup. Let me go through the characters as well. So first of all, the best character, if you want to aggro with Brown, you have Coriander. So this is a 1-1-1 unit, so it's really quick, easy to get it in play. It gives you plus 2, plus 0, plus 1 on the unit you put it on. So for example, on a Godwin, it is one of the best combos because it drops onto the Godwin. The Godwin is immediately going to be 4. And also because you put a character on it, you're going to be able to reroll your Godwin. And then when you go out to attack, Godwin will get plus 2, plus 0, plus 0. So you're swinging in for 6. Also, Coronander gives you the unit that is set on it gives it Assault. So also becomes basically an Eagle, but on turn 2. Uh, when you can uh, pay the zero for Eagle to give it a salt and make it a six six zero one, this would be a six one two with a salt. However, at the end of the turn, you lose Coronander. Coronander goes into the junkyard at the end of the turn uh, because it's kind of like a suicide one time thing. But that's why we run three copies of Coronander so we can bring him out multiple times in the game. How he also has quick. So I've already talked about that quick effect. Because he's quick, you normally can only drop one character a turn, but technically you can drop a, any characters with quick during the turn. You still can't have multiple Coriander's in play because we got legend rules for all the characters. Again, if you play Magic the Gathering, you can tell this game is uh, a product of its era whenever game started to be just a little bit like Magic, but not exactly. So we get a lot for it. We get a lot of the stuff for it, and also Coriander is actually able to jump onto a unit whilst you have already signed attackers or defenders. Normally you can't do that. Normally if you have a character with quick, you still have to play it onto the unit before the unit is sent out to the battle area. Not with Coriander. Coriander can hitch a ride, get into a little shuttle and get into the unit just before you start to battle. So it's a fantastic card. Imagine this as being a very strong pump really in the deck more than anything, but it's only a one-off one um, uh, one of use. We got one copies of Mishe Kune, and this has been errated a little bit. Uh, it is still a 110 unit, and it gives you 011, so it's brilliant on a Jones Bor Borjarnon. That's ideally what it's here for to jump onto a Jones Borjarnon. That's what we like to use Miyashe for. Uh, but her OTD effect is slightly uh, errated uh, because of the original Japanese version of the card said that actually she... So what the OTD says, when this card goes to the battle area, Earth or Space, it gets plus zero, plus one, plus zero until the end of the turn. You only get this when you attack. The only, uh, the only change is that you don't get this when you're defending. But it still suits us perfectly because we're an offensive deck to be able to get, basically, imagine this unit as a 0-2-1 when you're attacking. That's that's what, that's all you need to think about this. Defending 0-1-1, attacking 0-2-1. That's what Miyashe Kuna gives us. And then finally, for a final character, we got two copies of Dana Soriel. Soriel is amazing, not because of the buffs, because she doesn't give us any buffs, she's a 0-0-0. 
but she does have prevent five so that means if there is uh, something that your opponent would try to do with our unit that prevent five is actually I imagine that as it was uh, printed on the unit as well uh, if your opponent is only targeting Dana, then it still has the prevent five but it kind of adds it anything that's on here is added to your unit in terms of keywords what really matters with Dana Soriel is her effect that in the defense step yours or your opponents you can pay one and when this card is in the battle area earth or space put one of your unit cards in the station area in this card squad in any order in re-roll status so you want to get out Dana as early as possible put her on a Jones Borjarnon so Jones Borjarnon gets the plus zero plus one plus zero buff Technically, you can also put her on an army, or it doesn't matter. She doesn't have battleship support, but it doesn't matter. The uh, the effect is still usable. Put her on a defensive. Put her on one of the support units. And then on the turn, when you've played, let's say this is turn two, you do this. You do this. Okay. Turn three comes, you untap. You play turn a Gundam equipped with the beam saber. In the defense step, you send this team up. To defend or well you can send these up to attack send them up to attack if you want to and then when the defense step comes you pay that one and you say okay I'm going to put the turn egg on them in the front in the reroll status so ba she basically calls uh, a unit to her aid uh, as it were and that allows you to have these units, the Turnay Gundam, the Eagle, the Gundam Leopard, immediately be able to attack or defend in reroll status because you get that effect from Danasauriel. Now, even better, if you can get Danasauriel's unit to be supported with the Armier, then this will happen at the end of the turn. You, these would all roll. But you can reroll Jones Borjarn on with Dana on it, or whatever unit Dana's on. And then when it comes into your opponent's turn, let's say you already have swung with this and this isn't supported, but you can go out and defend and you can do the same story again, do this, or bring any one unit up in reroll status. Absolutely brilliant, fantastic combo. I love that I kind of figured this card out because it really ensures that any of your units will be able to ultimately come and attack in reroll status. I know Godwin already has it and Wad already has it, but none of these big units, these eight units, to be able to come in and defend. And sometimes you don't have a character for Godwin, but it's good to be able to get that out as well in, in reroll status. So these are the units, uh, these are the characters. Let's go and look at our commands. Now, brown specifically is a color that is not big on commands, but the commands that they have are all, most of, most of them are very powerful. It's got loads of operations, most of them not very good. There are some great operations in brown, but a lot of them are very, very uh, card intensive. You have to discard cards from your hand. And whilst we do have the best card draw command that is in the English version of this game, it's still not enough to kind of keep us fueled for all those operations. Anyway, we got three copies of Treasure Confiscation, by far the best draw two card in the game. You can play it in turn uh, with, with two generators, one brown, two generators, doesn't cost you anything extra, um, all the other ones do, and um, you can play this at any time, any time, and you draw two cards from the top of your discard pile. Now, discard pile drawing is already great, because you will have spent money for another card, and then you can just scoop those up, so you don't actually lose them. I wouldn't say it's like heal, but you're certainly not exerting any additional resources from your deck, uh, because you don't need to. Buy for the best draw two, and I can see how bad that glare is. Bring this down here. Carrying on with um, really good command cards in brown, three copies of Mountain Cycle of the Moon. Mountain Cycle of the Moon is playable with two brown resources in play. Yes, again, doesn't cost you anything extra. Any timing again. Look at the top five cards from the top of your discard pile. Select one of the cards and put it into your hand. Put the remaining cards in any order and return them to the bottom of the discard pile. No additional resource on your nation pile besides you playing this card. But the fact that 
because you obviously will be taking damage and if you're if you're not taking damage our units are some of them some of the units are quite costly you know um one cost one cost but when we go into turn three two costs two costs two costs and then one costs again and indeed uh, a few of our uh, the coronanders are also costly units so the mountain cycle of the moon will just again allow you to rather than picking cards from your nation pile you're just picking cards from a discard pile those are put face down anyway you don't know what they are so it's almost like drawing from your deck it's a fantastic card and I absolutely love it and the fact that it gives you a uh, scry five and pick one makes it an absolutely amazing amazing very powerful card two copies of white doll this is also very good called card filtering in a way if you like it but it's better than that it says um, one brown any two but one brown doesn't cost you anything any timing move one generation unit or character card from a junkyard to your hand you can often use this to get another Coriander back in, or one of your beefy big units, like uh, when you lose um, uh, when you lose an Eagle Charger. White doll it, bring it back to your hand. You can replay it again. And if you got your uh, Dinosauriel combo already set up, it's gonna immediately be able to swing. And then finally. For those of you who didn't realize that brown had removal, it does, and it's called Expulsion of the Dana Project. Two brown, any three, but two brown doesn't cost you anything. You can play it in the attack step only yours or your opponents, though, which is uh, quite good. And basically, what happens is uh, both you and your opponent will take your unit card with the highest total cost, and total cost is calculated by adding these three up. So you add up the uh, specific generator cost, the total generator cost, and the cost of the unit. You add these up, and whatever is the highest one for your opponent, you decide on. Um, uh, you decide if if it is um, if you get, if they got two of the same value, you decide on it. Both you and your opponent take your highest total cost unit and put it at the bottom of their discard piles which is fantastic um, because well whilst we don't really care about the size of our discard piles because we're gonna be picking stuff back out from it and particularly if this happens when you have been kind of managing your discard pile, you don't have too many you technically could still see that card through a treasure confiscation or a mountain cycle of the moon but that's beyond the fact it simply put removes the most expensive card on both players side yes it is a mirrored effect however we don't really care because we have armier which is a quite costly unit two three two that's a seven uh which is allowing us to keep turn egg on them in the play one three two is a six only so that will keep that in play and also we have um gundam leopard to give us other additional option in that same uh, price range if you like it and eagle it doesn't matter because eagle you normally are going to be just hitting it losing it that's it but if you feel that eagle is the best one to lose on your side that's also not a big issue ideally the fact is that you are losing less than your opponent because you have a lot more recursion you can bring stuff back with mountain cycle you can bring stuff back with white doll you've got additional card draw you can filter with mighty fella so by the time your opponent realizes that actually that loss for you wasn't that big and they've lost a I don't know a Gundam Appian for example uh, then yeah that could be the game winning move for you so expulsion of the Dana project super underrated card I've really not seen any discussions about this but it actually is the removal that Brown has and Brown has very very good command cards this is it for a 50 card deck of course it has to be 50 I'm glad you guys joined me for this deck profile as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do leave a like, leave a uh, comment below and share if you haven't done it so yet. Until next time guys, peace.